here. We have work to do, Orchid Pot Puri. See what I did there? So thank you very, very much for clicking on this video and joining me in doing several little repots, transitions, and one newbie has to be taken care of. Two, actually. So this is my Phalaenopsis violacea that I just recently got from Großrechner Orchideen. And as it is growing new roots, I would like to get it into my preferred setup of lacquer and self-watering as soon as possible because there's not much time left uh, with regards to temperatures being adequate for this kind of a transition. So I'm going to do a little bit of a gamble. Now this one looks to be in good health. The roots aren't exactly, you know, big stonky roots that would make you think, yeah, no problem. So what I've got planned for with this one is a single pot of 15 centimeters, just one microfiber, don't want to drown the thing. And then hopefully I can control the watering and the flushing in a smaller pot also. My speculation is, as I try to get this bit of bark off without breaking the root, trying to just wedge my nail in there. There we go. Success. So my speculation is as well that with the evaporative cooling that Lekka has in a pot, a smaller pot won't stay cold as long as a bigger pot would with a lot of Lekka around it. So there's just a tad bit of cleanup to be done. I'm not going to go absolutely mad on this one. I can pretty much leave it at that. There is some organic media left on the roots, but I'm not too concerned about that. That flushes out quite quickly. The best thing is to get this established as soon as possible. This little bit of organic that is left on the roots, considering what I'm going to be doing with it, with flushing it every second day as it transitions, is going to be no problem whatsoever. So I'm not going to mess with it under the tap or anything like that. I have a small little concern that I saw when I was unboxing. Let me show you. And that is this little brown mark right here. I'm not trying to disturb that root. You see that? So I may dab some dragon's blood on that because I don't see anything else that would warrant any use of hydrogen peroxide. And that's about it get that into a pot and not mess around with it too much. She says, famous last words. And then the day arises and suddenly I'm like, oh, I cut corners. No, I don't think so. So I have a 15 centimeter pot of my preferred setup here, which I will fill with Lekka up to the loop and then put the orchid in and clean her up. Okay, I've got my dragon's blood as well, which I'm going to apply before potting her up. It hasn't darkened anymore since I got it from the unboxing. So it's not like I'm, doesn't look wet, but uh, I don't know what that is. So we get some of that on there. stuff stains something chronic. There we go. Get rid of that. And in case something breaks, I have it in a double glass. <laughs> I don't trust it. I don't trust it. So this orchid has been soaking a day 
in the nutrient solution of just seaweed and 300 ppm of kelp max. And I'm just gonna let the dragon, dragon's blood do a little bit of its job while we move on to the next one. That's gonna drip everywhere because I'm anxious to get this beautiful Myrmocatlia Maria Louise Fuchs purple into a pot. Has also been on and off soaking in a nutrient solution and I'm only getting around to it now so it's had a wet dry cycle throughout. Fernanda grows inorganic for the most part so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup on these roots. I'm not going to go nuts on them and I'm putting her in a smaller pot as well because same reason the effect of evaporative cooling with LECA coming into winter is not exactly the ideal circumstance. I very rarely, I've stopped using heat mats because of the cost factor involved. And electricity is very expensive in, um, in Spain. So I don't, I refrain from heat mats as best as possible. Now, if I have an emergency and I can see something is not doing well or then I would definitely try it. But I can assure you that in all my years that of, of using heat mats, I have also lost fowls especially, even though they were raised on heat mats. So, I don't know. Now these roots are pretty much, they're viable, they're tired, but there's some dead branching going on. And because there's a lot of it, I am going to fuss with this a little bit more uh, to take out whatever is going to be decaying organic stuff, which for example, with the Phalaenopsis, I didn't do with that organic that is stuck to the roots because that is minimum. But if these were to decay on me, then that's a lot of inorganic material in the pot. So I'm just gonna cut back to where I see even though the root is tired, where I can see that there is more substance. Most of the branching ones are gone. So we'll just keep on moseying around. If I see a crack, I take it back. <laughs> that rhymes. This is not exactly the right time of year to be doing this, but I don't have bark media to transition her with. So what my plan is with the small pot is to simulate bark and start her off very, very gently with a semi wet dry cycle before I actually go full on self watering. That will incorporate a lot of flushing. So I have my new orchids to in a set sort of circumstance in their schedule, they will have every second day a flush. And I won't have any anything in the reservoir until I see that things are going to go well. There's a lecker bead, you're used to it, so we'll keep you. All right. Let's go round and round and get more of the tips off and just make sure because these roots can feel firm but they are actually dead. So some feel firm, they look dead but they're just tired. We've got to be a little bit more on an investigative adventure here. You can't just assume the color is what determines whether a root is healthy or not. Now I have a little bit of bark stuck here to one branching root and I'm going to leave that. No harm, no foul. It's fine. But there is something quite a bit of dead in the middle. I don't like that. Going into winter, I don't like it. I don't like a bunch of tightly wrapped 
inorganic media in one sole location. So I'll just take my time and work with this one by one. Just be mindful of the new growth. It is late afternoon and we don't want to perpetuate a problem if there is none. There we go. So you can see the roots that look tired is also staining from the tannin of the bark. They're not dead, they're firm, but she will need a new root system. She will need a new root system. And that's what we will be working towards. I've given her enough energy, I think, to my understanding, I think there's enough energy in her now to be able to do this. And as she came bare root, it's fundamental that she doesn't stay that way. In my opinion. There you go. She has four new growths coming, so that's promising. When they will start to make a move, I do not know. There's a little something in the back here. I can take off. That came off pretty easily. It gives me a little bit more access to be looking in here to make sure there's no debris that can cause a problem. Exciting, exciting. Three different variables today. Because I also have my little uh, well, magic wand. I'm going to reposition her in the pot. So that's why I got all this equipment out. It makes sense. We need the support for eventualities, not for any kind of spike, but in case, I always put a little support in. And then let's get the lecker going. Let's see if we didn't overdo it. Take you to the back. No, you'll be fine. So basically, most of what I will be doing is flushing. I've given her enough fertilizer to last her for at least two weeks, especially this time of year. She hasn't started growing the new growth, so there'll be a lot of flushing going on. And she's going to go and live right next to the similar one, the Mercatavola Thompsoniana, who has been missing a pot next to her because <laughs> that one went to Fernanda. So <laughs> she's going to look at her and go, oh, hello. You don't look familiar, but welcome. That's all I'm going to do. There is no need to do more. Do I want to secure you a little bit? No, you're fine. Ah, we've had a lot of wind lately. Nothing worse than panicking about something that you can fix straight away. No need. Tag. There's a birthday party going on. Oh, how cute. Can you hear it? If I didn't do the filter, maybe I can remove the filter at this stage. That's her done. Rock and roll. Gorgeous. Perfect. Now, let's get the little fowl in. I think the dragon spot, it's not like it dries quickly, but I think that it's good to go regardless. It's not dripping anymore. And I have to still make a label. I haven't made my own labels yet for these guys. But Großrechner Orchideen has wonderful handwriting. So I'm not concerned. It shall be done. You see, I only make my labels when my orchids arrive, and that is the date they go that goes onto my labels, their arrival date. Not 
the day I order them. And the same with my divisions. The division date, the day I cut, is what goes on the label. Looks very floppy in here. But she's going to now live with the other summer bloomers. Let's see. In the background there. Over there is a table of summer bloomers and there's a shelf underneath. And that is where she's going to live, on the shelf underneath. Because so she's been outside since she's arrived. The temperatures are still mild enough. So uh, that's where I'm going to put her. And the same thing with this one. She has had enough fertilizer in the last days to sustain her. There will be no fertilizer in the reservoir. There will be maybe a centimeter of water just because they do like their water. These are water hungry. She came in very small like seedling bark. So I'm not gonna get that root into the leka. I'm gonna be placing sphagnum moss over the top. All right. Good thing that we have some things on hand still. If I don't have sphagnum moss available anymore, I shall put microfiber. But for now, it's sphagnum moss. And what I try to do when I spray the moss is to just spray the edge here. And I don't go in close anymore. It's not that time of year. I can't allow myself the luxury of being all in the Rambo with my spray gun. But um, this way, when it's here, it will then absorb further into the root area there and it won't actually go into the stem. And then one more thing, some lemon juice with some water mixed just to wipe the leaves down. If it was bright sunny day, I would put her inside. No lemon water on wet leaves in the sun ever. And this just takes off a little bit of the residue. And not underneath the leaf either. That is a no-no for the stomatas. You can burn the leaves that way. Not, I, I have not experienced that yet, so touch wood, touch wood. It doesn't happen with this one, but I have seen it happen. And you mean well to be wiping under the leaf, but that's not not a good idea. Keep lemon also away from roots, the acid. You don't want that. And this is like, you know, like a, a teaspoon to a half a cup of water kind of concentration. It's not pure lemon juice. I have used pure lemon juice before in very bad cases where the fertilizer was so encrusted on it. I've used it pure, but then I've wiped it off afterwards with normal water and then maybe two or three sessions of that to eliminate the crust. All right, last, there's more work last. to be done. We're not quite home and dry yet with my little orchid pot puri. I can see mosquito larvae there. What are you doing in my, where did you come from? Ick. My magic wand here needs some intervention because it's growing roots, but the new growth is going towards the back of the pot. So that's not what I need right now at all. So I'm going to take advantage of this moment and do a switcheroo. Same pot, that's the plan. She has never bloomed for me, but uh, I can see that she's probably going to try on this latest growth, unless that is a blind sheath. Let's get you out. Shouldn't be too difficult. She's not, she's been in this pot for two years. And unless, I would not have repotted her if she hadn't gotten herself into this direction of growth. But it's nice to see how they're doing because I have several similar kinds 
and it's nice to see if they're doing well in these pots. So it kind of gives me an indicator for the rest. And it's looking good. If a root is pulling the microfiber out, it's looking good. So that's great. New roots, we can do a quick cleanup. Wonderful. Wunderbar. Let's put you back there. And let's have a look-see. I'm gonna use fresh lecker. There's moss, dead moss in there. Don't need that. This is great. Let me show you something. Ooh, come here. A little bit of all sorts going on here. But look, that's all right. You can see the start stop of the roots. That is me not keeping up with the watering. That is when the microfiber dries out, but she has a vigorous root system, so I'm not concerned. But I know now that I, here you can see the mistake of when the microfiber dries out. And I did mention in the video, that root went down. Excellent, little sphagnum moss there. I did mention in a video that I had these three similar ones kind of neglected in a corner. And that is the result you see on the root system. They're all vi viable, but there's no need for the root system to look like that. If I had taken care of them properly, like not in a corner and they'll be fine, the root system would be white and perfect. But never mind. Teachable moment right there. And what we are going to do, it's a climber. So let's see what we are going to do. I have some dead roots in the back. I'm going to keep that. And that's it. I can trim off the bottom. That's what I'm going to do. Save my lacquer beads for my recycling process, which has been, wow, Groundhog Day. I tell you, every day I had about, I don't know, three kilos of lacquer to clean. And that is the repottings, not just the pottings, the repottings I filmed, but all the other repottings that were necessary. See how this one's swinging around? Yeah, that's a branch that's coming off. So I haven't filmed all my repottings, but every day I've been cleaning Lekka. Wow. And some wasn't so difficult. Like this is not going to be so hard because it's not that dirty. But others, my goodness. Stay over the debris pot because who wants to be picking that out? So I've been quite, quite busy. I'm sort of a little bit pressed for time now, timing wise with what I'm doing. And I think, uh, still considering my maximum, still needing to do something there, but oh my goodness, I'm running out of time. And the roots aren't growing and the sheaths are there. So I'm, I'm really, really speculating on what to do. And I may just intervene for the sake of intervention. There we are. That already looks much better. And on top of that, I've just seen the start or signs of where the next growth will be, which is awesome. Because look. There it is. So we're going to turn her around and get her facing in the right direction that we want her to be in. And then rock and roll. All righty, magic wand. I need one. I need a magic wand. <laughs> Let's get the support in. And I'm gonna put her in first without my lecker and loop-de-loop -loop because the roots are already quite low and I would have to cut off more in order to fit her in. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put her back, except the other way around, into the pot as she was. Where was that new growth? That's coming across that side. 
So I'm going to just position her in such a way that everything kind of like, sort of, faces into the middle until she starts to do something again. That would possibly make me rethink what I've just done. But first of all, let's get her into position. This was a nice little variety of chores today. This was my three for the day. I have a ciliaris coming up. Oh my goodness. I have to do my epidendrum ciliaris. I will do that on a video. She is still in lava rock, semi-hydro. Not a problem, but she's coming out of the pot because new roots are growing and I am very, very concerned about her staying in that pot for any time longer. She has to come out and it's going to be a tough one. So I will be filming that, but I shall do that another day because if I start now and I encounter a problem, then I might actually make mistakes and I'd like to avoid that as best as possible. Done! label and some fertilizer in the bottom and here we are no more letting the leca dry out stop it already big no-no there we go let's get some small leca onto those roots that are used to being wet Make sure that they stay wet. There we go. And there we have it. Three different types of little poddings to do here. My little orchid pot puri for the day is over by Alessia. Fingers crossed she settles in nicely. Myrmocatlia. Fingers crossed she settles in nicely. And magic wand. It would be nice to see some blooms. So thank you so very much for watching. I have very much enjoyed your company and I hope that you are going to have a wonderful day. Stay safe, please. And I hope to see you also in my next video. Take care. Bye.